Thirty minutes later, something sad became clear. Jonas held the chubby baby boy, not sure what to do. The baby, Ryan, seemed to like being gently bounced on Jonas's lap. Ryan laughed and clapped, making everyone around them laugh too. Jonas felt happy to see Ryan and others so joyful because of him. When Jonas went to the DMV that morning, he didn't expect to meet any children, but Ryan's parents were already there when Jonas arrived. Jonas looked for a seat and found one next to a couple with their toddler son. Even though Jonas wanted to be alone, he chose to sit there because all the other seats were either between two big men, next to a group of girls who weren't talking, or too close to the smelly restroom. Jonas sat down and waited for his turn, wishing it would come faster. But then something unexpected happened. The toddler sitting next to him reached out and touched him. Startled, he looked down, and to his surprise, it was the toddler looking up at him with a wide smile showing off the few teeth in his upper and lower mouth. Jonas couldn't help but smile at the sight of the toddler, but what he didn't know was that the toddler had only just started his approach. Knowing that he had succeeded in making Jonas warm up to him, Ryan made the full transition from his mom's ties to Jonas's. Being so shocked, Jonas stared at the toddler in his lap, unsure of what to do with him. The boy's mother apologized to him and tried to take back Ryan, but the boy let out an ear-piercing shriek and shoved his mom's hands away. Jonas glanced at her and then back at the boy. Her expression was apologetic while Ryan was ecstatic as if he was having the time of his life. Ryan reached out toward Jonas and placed a palm on either side of his face. He stared at Jonas with deep affection while babbling off unintelligible baby words. That gesture softened Jonas and he found himself deeply emotional. Acting on pure instinct, he wrapped his hand around the baby and began to bounce him slowly at first before he picked up the pace. It's amazing that my son likes you, a complete stranger. I don't mean that in a bad way. He usually refuses for anyone other than us, his parents, to hold him. But look how quickly he took to you, Ryan's mom exclaimed. Jonas shrugged helplessly, unsure of how to reply. He couldn't say why the boy chose to like him, but it made him feel at peace, which was strange to him. Jonas told the couple that he didn't mind holding Ryan, just like that. Jonas continued playing with Ryan, making funny faces, and the boy laughed so hard. Ryan's parents watched the interaction between their son and Jonas for some time before they struck up a conversation with him. Why did you choose to come to the DMV today of all days? It's quite busy at this time of the month, Ryan's dad said with a look of genuine empathy on his face. Jonas replied that he was new in town and had to get his driver's license that day. Curious about why the couple was also there on this seemingly busy day when they knew they could have come at other times to avoid the long queue, Jonas inquired. Ryan's dad admitted they couldn't make it at those other times because of their baby, Ryan. On the initial morning, they had planned to come. Ryan had woken up with a fever and wasn't breathing well. They had abandoned all the plans they had for the day to rush to the hospital and get him medical attention. After that situation was dealt with, they chose a new date to go. But on that date, Ryan had been fussy. He couldn't eat, he wouldn't sleep, he would throw up what he'd eaten, and he was irritable. They couldn't leave him in that state, especially considering that he was the child they had prayed so many years to have. Because of that, they had missed coming to the DMV again and again, with Ryan displaying one tantrum or another, preventing them from coming when it was most convenient. They had tried to get nannies involved, their friends and family to watch him, but all to no avail until that fateful morning. They had breathed a sigh of relief to finally be at the DMV. They didn't dare complain about the long queue. If they didn't renew their licenses that day, it would expire in a few days and they wouldn't be able to drive, which was a necessity. Jonas's eyebrows were raised so high as he listened to the couple share their ordeal with him. He was speechless because the calm, adorable baby in his arms didn't look like he was capable of the trouble he had apparently been causing his parents. It made Jonas think that appearances could be deceiving. Ryan continued to be all over Jonas, oblivious to what his parents had said about him. He stood in Jonas's lap and dragged the tips of his ears outwards, laughing as Jonas made a funny face. His parents thought that Jonas already had enough of Ryan and wanted to take their son back, but he wailed until they left him where he wanted to be. In Jonas's lap, Jonas found this hilarious. He commented that Ryan had good lungs for him to be able to scream so loudly without hurting his vocal cords. He was very playful and healthy. His mom told Jonas 
that it was a miracle that this was so because the circumstances surrounding Ryan's birth were complicated. Ryan's mom had experienced numerous health challenges when she had been pregnant with him. Her blood pressure had shot up. There was fluid retention and albuminuria, which were symptoms of preeclampsia. Throughout most of her pregnancy, she was on bed rest. Then, out of nowhere, at the end of the pregnancy, she had gone into labor. Ryan had been born a month early with no complications at all. He was a perfectly healthy baby, and from the moment he was born, his mom's health challenges ceased completely. Jonas's jaw dropped at the end of the story. It was amazing that such a thing happened. He asked how old Ryan was. Little did he know that the innocuous question would change the rest of his life. Ryan's dad proudly declared that his boy turned a year old a few days ago, mentioning the exact date and time. The moment Jonas heard it, he froze, chills going down his spine, and for a second, he stopped breathing. It had been 30 minutes since the couple started talking with Jonas, and now they would learn a heartbreaking truth from him. The couple was surprised by Jonas' reaction to their son's birth date. They asked if he was okay, with worry lines on their foreheads. Even Ryan, who had been moving around a lot in Jonas' arms, became still as if he sensed his friend's change in mood. Jonas took deep breaths to avoid going into shock. He couldn't believe that meeting the couple and Ryan was just a coincidence. He felt deep down that it wasn't. Seeing their concerned looks, Jonas shared with the couple, I had a brother, and exactly a year ago, on the same day, date, and time that Ryan was born, he passed away. This confession shocked the room as people around had been listening to their conversation. Jonas explained that his brother used to live in the city but died in a terrible motor accident. Jonas had been mourning ever since, but a few days ago, he decided to move to the city and live as his brother would have wanted. He had been very sad until Ryan crawled into his lap and brightened his life. Jonas's story amazed the couple, bringing tears to their eyes. The people around them cheered at the incredible, almost supernatural event. Everyone was convinced that Ryan was a miracle. Some even thought he might be the reincarnation of Jonas' brother, orchestrating events to meet his younger brother left behind. Whether these speculations were true or not, one thing was certain. Jonas felt confident. Ryan's parents wanted to stay in touch with Jonas. They invited him to dinner on Sunday at their house since he had no other family in the city. Jonas was thankful and happy to see Isra's cute face again. He felt that the feeling was mutual.